psychotic disorders are going to be primarily schizophrenia and its variants. So we're going to spend a lot of time in this lesson about schizophrenia, a little bit about its treatment, and then how you modify the name based on the duration of symptoms and whether or not mood disorder is present. Psychosis is a thought disorder, so it's more than delusions. But what you're going to see is predominantly the delusion. So a delusion is a fixed false belief. A bizarre delusion is a fixed false belief that couldn't possibly be true. The problem is that bizarre is going to depend on your culture. If you live in the United States and believe that physics is truth, then you may look up at the stars at night and believe that there are balls of gas emitting light from light years away and we're seeing light from 10 million years ago. Which if you told that to somebody who didn't believe your physics would sound pretty bizarre. But you consider that truth. So someone else may have a cultural difference that believes that those same stars that you believe are light are simply fairies that are communicating to us. So it's not enough anymore to say that a delusion is bizarre. That diagnostic criteria is out. You must have sufficient diagnostic criteria to make it fit schizophrenia. Otherwise, it may not be a disorder at all. Delusions, fixed false beliefs, bizarre delusions can't possibly be true, but that can't possibly be true because it's variable on culture is no longer heavily relied on. So what I want to do is start off with schizophrenia, learn a lot about that, modify it, and round off the lesson with some of the highlights of treatment knowing that we're going to get into the pathophys in the farm in the farm psych lecture. Start off with schizophrenia. I promise it won't be that bad. All right, we know that schizophrenia is a thought disorder. And we also know that it is a genetic component. We don't exactly know what the gene is, we do know that those who are identical twins have significantly increased risk of developing schizophrenia. Usually, it is the disorder of a mind that is predisposed to schizophrenia following a sufficient stressor. See so how that becomes relevant in the middle of the lesson. But schizophrenia is, consists of both positive symptoms, those things that are there that shouldn't, delusions, hallucinations, and we believe that this is caused by an excess amount of dopamine. You can see psychotic features like hallucinations if you treat someone with Parkinson's with dopamine agonists. You're trying to restore the movement portion of the brain, but you're giving dopamine everywhere and you may precipitate hallucinations or delusions. There's also negative symptoms. These are the things that should be there but aren't. We believe that these are caused by an increase in serotonin. Now, I'm not getting down to the subtype or the location. We will do that in the psych farm lesson. I just want you to see that where I want you to lock in one-to-one, -one, positive symptoms, dopamine, negative symptoms, serotonin, and it may not be wholeheartedly truthful. It just happens to be that's how the medications have turned out. Typicals cover dopamine, focus on positive. Atypicals work on both dopamine and serotonin and end up treating positive and negative symptoms. All right, enough of warm up. Let's talk about the diagnostic criteria for schizophrenia. You must have at least two of the five we're about to list. And one must be from one to three. See why that makes sense in just a second. And I'm going to break them down into positive symptoms and negative symptoms. You have to have two of the five, and any one must come from one to three. So number one are the delusions. The delusions may be bizarre or otherwise, but what you're looking for in these delusions, there's gonna be two major ones that are gonna predominate. That is persecution or grandiosity. Someone's out to get them or they're bigger than they appear. Number two is hallucinations. And 
schizophrenia, psychotic disorders, unlike those that are induced by medication or illness, are generally going to be auditory. And you may actually see this in a patient responding to internal stimuli. They're looking off into the corner. They're having a full conversation. They're pausing at appropriate times and responding to questions that are being asked. But you only hear one side of the conversation because the person they're talking to isn't there. They see them talking to them. They hear the whole conversation. Much like someone wearing their cell phone. You're not sure if they're talking to their cell phone or they're talking to themselves. A schizophrenia patient has no cell phone. They're talking to someone on the other side, but that person really isn't there, which can be very frustrating for patients. Right? If you ever try to have a conversation with somebody when a movie's playing, well, you like that movie. You're distracted from the conversation by the movie, or maybe you're distracted from the movie by the conversation, but you can't attend both. That's what's happening to a schizophrenic all the time. There's full conversation. This hallucination is talking at them, trying to have a conversation while you're interviewing them. You don't know what's going on, but they're trying to shut that person up or tune them out, but it's really hard because it's their own brain doing it. This also can lead to the disorganization. And three and four are about disorganization. While you can also have catatonia, I'm going to leave it off the board because I want you to link catatonia with mood disorders. That was one of the big changes in DSM-5. There's no more subtypes. Paranoid, catatonic, disorganized, schizophrenia are gone. They're simply diagnostic criteria. Disorganization can occur in the way of speech or behavior. Disorganization is fairly difficult to explain, but it's pretty easy to spot. Disorganization means you just don't do things the right way, right? You've lost touch with reality. You're doing something that's completely off the wall. The way this manifests is an appearance. People stop grooming, stop bathing, stop changing their clothes, and they stop leaving the house. If you can imagine JFK and the King of Spain, who aren't really there, talking to a college kid, telling him not to go to class, but to wear a tin foil on their head to protect them from the aliens, but don't go outside because if you go outside, the satellites will get you and the US government's coming after you. You can imagine that that kid who's listening to JFK and the King of Spain is probably gonna have a tough time making good decisions. Right? So it's, when it's that full blown, it's obvious. And so this is there, but it's very difficult to punctate what disorganization means in one moment. The fifth is all the negative symptoms. So any one negative symptom counts, but you're generally gonna see these combined. You're gonna see things like flat affect, poverty of speech, or of movement. Anhedonia, or you might even see cognitive impairment or cognitive delay. They weren't born this way. And when they're active, it can be impressive. You're talking at them, but they don't even engage at you there. They have this blank stare on their face. And if they finally turn to you, they can only respond in one or two word sounds. That's not because they're gravely disabled because mental retardation, cognitive impairment. It's because their disease is active. If you treat their disease, they go back to normal. And that's the thing though, when you see someone who's active, the presentation is almost always going to be a psychotic break. The psychotic breaks occur when medications are stopped for the first time, when they first identify the disease, and they may even have breaks through medications. Every time they have a break, they'll be left with more cognitive impairment than they had previously. So in a stepwise fashion, as they get older, schizophrenics will lose function faster, will end up being demented way sooner than non-schizophrenics. The classic board question of the first psychotic break is going to occur in someone who's a teenager or in their early 20s, usually after a major stressor. And the major stressor that most kids go through is adulthood. 18, you leave the house, get a job, or you go to college. And if you see a kid with a change in behavior, the hallucinations and the delusions may not yet be apparent, but they're acting weird. They're not showing up to class. And when you finally knock on their door, they've got feces all over the wall and they haven't bathed in seven days. That's abnormal. Right? The change in behavior and a change in thought that may not be overt at first. When you see that in a college age kid, Rule out drugs, in particular cocaine. We do that with the Utox. Make sure it's not intoxicated.